astronomers have detected coherent radio signals from a planet just 12 light years away. This planet is YZ Seta B, <laughs> and it's orbiting around a small red dwarf star known as YZ Seta. Now, this is uh, 70.5 trillion miles away. Well, what they say they have found is a, uh, as I said, a coherent repetitive radio signal. Now, this is not you know, a, a broadcast of some alien version of a cartoon, the Jetsons. No, it's not even uh, an alien civilization signal. <laughs> but uh, it is a signal which can very much indicate the uh, presence of life on the planet because what they think they detected is a magnetic field around a small rocky, what's well, I say small earth size rocky planet. So, this is major because if you look within our own solar system and other places we've detected so far, we have a hard time finding planets like Earth, the size of Earth, rocky planets that have magnetic fields. Uh, Venus has a very weak field, uh, about 1% of Earth's, and <laughs> although it has a substantial atmosphere, we'll talk about that later. And Mars has uh, no planetary magnetic field, just localized fields. Uh, and then we have, uh, actually it's the field of uh, Mercury, this 1% of Earth's field. Mercury has a better magnetic field even than Venus. So we're going to talk about that, guys. Uh, this discovery was made by doctors Sebastian uh, Pineda and uh, Jackie uh, uh, Willa, Willisden. <laughs> Willisden. I hope I've said that right. Uh, anyway, so they have uh, determined, uh, found this signal using the uh, Carl J, excuse me, Carl G. Janke Very Large Array, which is one of the uh, top uh, radio uh, telescope uh, instruments managed by the National Radio Astronomy Observatory under the National uh, Science Foundation. And this uh, instrument has gained uh, a lot of insights in some of these distant planets. So uh, also Joe Pierce from the National uh, Science Foundation, who also works on this program as the director for the National Radio Astronomy Observer, he hails this discovery. And what he has said is that the search for potentially habitable or life-bearing worlds and other solar systems depends in part on being able to determine if a rocky Earth-like planet may eventually have magnetic fields, or actually has magnetic fields. Excuse me, I quoted that wrong. Uh, and that's very significant because uh, you've got to have a magnetic field for life. It's not just a matter of being in the habitable zone of the planet. Now, Dr. Uh, Panetta, what he said is, we saw the initial burst, and it looked beautiful. Uh, he went on to say, uh, when uh, we saw it again, it was very indicated that, okay, maybe we really do have something here. Dr. Panetta is uh, really into this study of the magnetic fields as it can be very pivotal for the planet to retain atmosphere, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. So uh, uh, the, he's with the University of Colorado. Now, at, where the uh, uh, Bucknell University is where uh, the assistant professor, uh, Villa Dezin, <laughs> it's spelled V-I-L-L-A-D-S-N, it may be like Gadsden, Villa's Den. Anyway, uh, she said, I witnessed something that no one's actually observed before when she's seen this. And then she went on further to say, we're looking for planets that are actually really close to the stars and have a size similar to Earth. These planets are way too close to the stars to be somewhere you could live. So on this planet, you don't expect life, but uh, the, the, the magnetic field is an indicator. We may find stuff otherwise, but she went on to say, but because they're so close to the planet, it's kind of like plowing through a bunch of stuff coming through the star. If that planet has a magnetic field as it plows through the stuff, uh, enough star stuff, it will cause the star to emit the bright radio waves. So uh, what we're seeing is not so much the magnetic uh, fill directly from the planet, but this uh, or a radio emission from the planet itself, but a radio emission from the star YZ Seta uh, as a result of the planet plowing through this star stuff. <laughs> uh, there's other problems with, with red dwarfs. So, uh, uh, what's the significance of a magnetic field? Well, it pr provides atmospheric protection. Uh, a magnetic field shields a planet's atmosphere from the solar wind, which can strip the atmosphere away. Just look at Mars. Mars may have once sported a, a nice biosphere, water, oceans. It's looking like uh, there's water on Mars, but the atmosphere is gone. So you don't see liquid water on the surface. Therefore, you don't have a, 
uh, you know, vegetation and a lot of critters running around on the surface of Mars. You know, they just don't have enough atmospheric pressure, liquid water, uh, because the atmosphere just won't support it. Uh, you may also be aware that radiation shielding is another uh, uh, attribute of a magnetic field. The magnetic field deflects harmful cosmic rays from the surface of a planet. These cosmic rays would damage the DNA of living organisms and disrupt life by so doing. You cannot have complex life if their uh, genetic structure is constantly being uh, ripped apart by uh, cosmic rays. Uh, and then again, uh, there's other benefits. You know, like many species on Earth use a magnetic field for, for navigation, but you know that means they've reached that level of complexity. But just at the smaller levels, some uh, processes and organisms rely on magnetic fields. For as an example, certain organic molecules and proteins, in particular, uh, and enzymes contain iron ions, uh, which exhibit magnetic properties that are involved in the various physiological processes that they uh, go through in supporting that uh, an organism to live. So uh, a magnetic field has very fundamental core uh, aspects for allowing the uh, existence of biological creatures, even just bacteria. Uh, and another thing is here on Earth, of course, you know, over the millions of years of adaptation, uh, life on Earth has uh, became accustomed to magnetic fields and their uh, play an influence and uh, cardiological, uh, cardiovascular, neurological, and other uh, functions of the uh, complex organism. So uh, these are all very important aspects of, excuse me, I got this camera bouncing. <laughs> Pardon me for that. But again, it's a matter of you need an atmosphere. You need a rocky planet in a habitable zone with an atmosphere. Habitable zone is where you could have liquid water. Now this planet, apparently the YZ Seta B is too close to the star for that. Uh, also, there are problems with red dwarf stars in general. They're more plentiful than uh, a yellow sun like we have, but they are, um, and you know, so we find planets around, most of the planets we're finding around stars like that simply because we're able to spot them faster because they occult the star more. And so that's the ones we're looking for. I hope we'll start looking more in the future at suns like, or stars like our sun. Uh, that, that's more difficult to do and it takes more time to determine the presence of planets. But we've already discovered 85 planets that are candidates for being able to support life. Uh, but they have to, like I said, be more than just in the habitable zone of uh, the star. If you take Venus, for example, uh, Venus has a, a very weak magnetic field. It does have a magnetic field, but, uh, and Venus has a lot of atmosphere. But you notice on Venus, uh, you don't have liquid water. Of course, they have the runaway greenhouse effect. At one time, there may have been oceans on Venus too. Venus is extremely hot. And, and mostly due to the atmosphere of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a heavier molecule. Maybe it's harder to strip away than the uh, most of the uh, uh, atmospheric molecules we have in Earth's atmosphere. It has a higher density. For example, if you hermetically sealed a house, like this little house I'm in here, and floated it in the atmosphere, it would float in the atmosphere of Venus, just the buoyancy, the internal volume of this house sill at about 50 kilometers high, which is also about the altitude where you have uh, Earth-like temperatures. <laughs> so maybe we could settle Venus, but you still have to worry about the cosmic rays somewhat, I suppose, and the acidity of the atmosphere itself. But the atmospheric pressure and temperatures at 50 kilometers are Earth-like. You could indeed. In fact, Venus is probably more settleable than Mars, <laughs> if you look at it from those standpoints. Now, uh, Mercury has a magnetic field because it's you know, a basically metallic planet, probably uh, due to erosion from being hit by uh, uh, incoming objects, comets and asteroids and other things that get attracted uh, toward the sun a lot. Uh, it's uh, probably just a, a planetary core. That's probably all we're seeing there, but it has a magnetic field, about 1% of Earth's strength. Earth has an unusually strong magnetic field for its size. And that may be because Earth was gifted by the uh, impact of another planet that helped form the moon early, early in its uh, formation period. And the presence of the moon may also help keep our core molten through tidal effects. But when we just may have more core material for a planet our size, more metallic core material, which may indeed enable our magnetic field to exist as long as it has. You have to have a lot of uranium to keep it hot down there. <laughs> and 
uh, like I said, the tidal influences of a, a large co-orbitable body like our moon, uh, which makes basically a dual planetary system, really helps us in many ways maintain life on Earth. We're a special planet. The plate tectonics may also be necessary, as been described, and there may also be a side effect of that impact, which may have knocked a lot of the crustal material off Earth, which may have coalesced in the moon. The moon has a lower density, about the density of crustal material. <laughs> so uh, we... We we're fortunate to have been gifted that impact very early in the formation process. And of course, if we have today, it would be the end of life as we know it. But it may make Earth very special and maybe the only one out of these 85 candidate uh, bodies that may actually be able to support life. We do not know yet. There's a lot to be determined in that category, or at least support complex life. There may still be life in the atmosphere of Venus. There may be life uh, in the deep in the soils of Mars, where you might find an interface between uh, the warmer uh, area, uh, the, the areas that are warmer from the geological heat below and the coldness from above. You may have you know layers of liquid water that are shielded from cosmic rays. So you may find some form of life deep within Mars itself, but you're not gonna find critters running around using radio sets and driving cars and launching rockets <laughs> or anything else on Mars or Venus. Uh, Earth is unique in that category as far as we know as of yet. Uh, doesn't mean we're the only case. There's so many billions of stars out there and a couple of hundred billion in our galaxy. And like I said, we've yet to really examine the, the stars like our sun. For planetary candidates, although I didn't mention one in a previous video. So uh, that's what we're looking at. You, you've got to look at the erosion of the atmosphere, uh, and you've got to look at uh, the protection that the uh, magnetic field provides against cosmic rays. Therefore, cosmic rays are essential. Another problem with being around a, a red dwarf star, which I kind of sloughed over a minute ago, is that red dwarf stars are highly active. They put out a lot of ginormous flares. Those flares may also contribute to the erosion of, of planetary atmospheres. And they may also, um, you know, you, you, you'd you have a hard time having a technological civilization on a planet like that, where you have huge induced currents and wires and things like that due to those large solar storms. Uh, our electric grid could not survive and may yet be dealt of a deadly blow by our own sun, which is not nearly as active as the red dwarfs, fortunately for us. So uh, this prospect of can you have life out there and can that, that planet support uh, complex life, which is a higher challenge, and even more so the development of civilization as we know it, are all big questions. We've not yet found that uh, conclusively anywhere else in the universe. So far as we know, we're unique. Now, like I said, given the vast the vast numbers of stars in the cosmos, uh, that would be very uh, uh, egocentric to think that we're totally unique, but we do not know differently as of this point in time with absolute certainty. <laughs> there are maybe some indicators of funny things going on, and we'll talk about that in other videos, but that's what we have to take into account. This is a very, very interesting finding. It does say that there are potentially other planets out there that have magnetic fields like Earth, and maybe we'll find one in a habitable zone, hopefully in a yellow star or some star that's larger than a, a red dwarf. So there's a lot to be looking out for. So keep looking up, guys. <laughs> maybe one day we'll, we'll know a lot more about this very soon. So with that, I'm just going to say uh, I want to thank you all for watching. This is Greg Allison with Galactic Gregs. Subscribe to my channel, bang the notification bell, and click all. I will be bringing you more space news, propulsion news, and other such news uh, as we go down the road. So stay tuned. Greg out.